So a little backstory before I tell you one of the crazy experiences of mine that happened during my two-year security career from 2013 to 2015. I'm a 6'7 male in Australia. I'd like to think I'm a fairly tough and intimidating guy, but some of the stuff that used to go on at that mall I used to work the night shift for still gives me goosebumps to this day. So the mall I worked at was very, very large, probably the largest in my state I'd say, and all the way up to about 8.30pm it would still be quite busy. Only around 9.30 would we manage to usher all of the stragglers out, and only at about 11pm would all of the business owners have left. My job was basically to patrol the mall and make sure there was no one sticking around after the doors were closed during the night. We didn't have guns or batons, only a can of mace that was very rarely used. There were multiple occasions where we would find would-be thieves hiding around trying to break into shops after dark, but they were normally far outnumbered by the four to five of us on shift at a time they would usually be intimidated by me or some of the other imposing members of security. This one night though, things started getting really weird for me on the night shift. So I'd say it was about 2 o'clock and I was standing in the middle of the empty food court eating a sandwich. This was the only part of the mall that had any light at night time due to the skylight, so it was comfortable to eat there. While I was eating though, I heard a dull scraping noise from the hallway leading off from the food courts into some toilets. It sounded like a piece of metal dragging across the floor. I was immediately put on edge and I flicked on my torch light without a moment of hesitation. I could remember creeping down the hallway, flashlight in hand, illuminating a good 6 to 7 meters in front of me. As it got closer and closer to the end of the hall, the noise became louder and louder until I was at the end of the hallway and there was the toilet doors to the left and right of me. I could tell the sound was coming from the female toilets though. I gripped the handle and opened the door a tiny little crack. The noise was now very clear and had me not scared, but confused. So I yelled, Oi, who's in there? The noise quickly stopped. I paused a moment, listening hard through the tiny crack of the door, and I swear to God, I could hear breathing. Low male breathing. I shut the door, still gripping the handle tightly, and flicked on my radio. This is 1-3. I need help in food court bathrooms, I think someone's here. No response. This was really strange and it put me further on edge. Policy was to always answer the radio, and now I was truly becoming quite alarmed. This is 1-3, does anyone copy? Still no response. I can remember whispering to myself, What is going on? I again opened the door a tiny crack. Listen mate. I said sounding as intimidating as possible. If you don't come out with your hands up, you're going to end up eating your teeth tonight. Do you want that? I sat there at the door, quite honestly terrified at this point, but there was no response. In fact, there was no noise at all. I yelled into the bathroom. Okay, mate, I'm coming in. If you do anything stupid, it's not my fault. You'll never walk again. I tried my hardest to sound scary, but my voice was quivering at this point. This whole situation made no sense at all. Why would someone be in the female bathrooms? What was the metal noise? What was even happening? I very slowly opened the door and scanned my flashlight across the room. All the cubicles were open, which was weird. But other than that, the room was totally empty. I was crapping myself about now. I was definitely losing it. I walked into the center of the bathroom, closing the door behind me. Scared to the core, I let out a faint. This is some horror movie stuff right here, eh? Come out. When I heard the long, whining squeak at the door behind me, I span around, basically crying at this point and shone my torch on a massive man, at least a head taller than me or so, it seemed in my state at the time. He was Caucasian, and at least in his forties, with matte gray hair all over his forehead. He was mid-opening the door, but he stopped dead still in the middle of his action. He just looked at me. Smiling this guilty smile like a kid would make when he gets caught stealing biscuits or something like that. I'm not going to lie. I was so scared I froze. He lifted his finger to his mouth. Shh. Before swinging the door all the way open and sprinting out with what looked like some type of small metal box in his hand. Turns out he was just behind the toilet door when I was opening it and I totally missed him. I was so close to him I didn't even notice him. He could have killed me if he had a knife or something and that thought still haunts me to this day. 
Later that night, my radio miraculously started working again and I got right on telling my co-workers about my story. They collectively went pale when I told them what happened. They all had similar stories, but none that were as much of a close shave as mine. I worked the night shift at that mall for another week after that before I quit. I'm not sticking around in a job like that. I needed help, and for some reason my radio screwed the pooch. Why, I may never know. I was walking with my dad in the mall. I, 19 at the time, a seller of a car was talking of a giveaway that they were going to make. I signed up, but my dad was extremely rude, as always, because in his words, the guy wasn't a good seller. I told him, Dad, stop, and gave the papers back to the guy. So we were leaving, and the seller came running to tell me I forgot to write my number in the application. I did. I need to point out that, back then, I was nice and polite with strangers. Not anymore. So I get home, and an unknown number texted me. The conversation kind of went like this. Hi, beautiful. Sorry, I don't have you on my contacts list. Who is this? It's me, the seller from the mall. What? Why is this guy texting me? I hate when guys call me beautiful to flirt with me, but this was beyond my limits. He goes on saying, Your dad was a bit grumpy, but you seem so nice and beautiful. Actually, you didn't have to write your cell phone number in the application, but I really wanted to talk to you again. I froze. So unprofessional from this guy. I don't know if that guy thought I was going to see that as romantic, but it just came off as incredibly creepy. I was dumb at the time, so the guy kept pushing a conversation, and I answered back with short sentences until he stopped texting me, and I blocked his number. I realize now I either should have told my dad or filed a formal complaint to the mall, but that was back when I was an old me. The new me wouldn't stand for that at all. I'm a 16 year old female and I recently asked my mom about this since I don't remember all the details. When I was 3 years old I lived in Ohio and was what we call the happy child. Rarely cried, always smiled, loved to talk to people. I also looked really adorable. Short red hair, green eyes, loved wearing a yellow polka dot dress with mini mouse pins. I also had a really high pitched squeaky voice. I wouldn't say it was annoying but you could definitely tell if I was talking and what I had to say. That's what's really important to keep in mind. It was sometime in the summer. My dad worked at a DVD company before the days of Netflix, so it was just mommy and me time. On this particular day, my mom took me to the mall to shop around since she was expecting a baby boy, and me, being the happy little kid I was, came with her to help, which was just to run around stores, look at toys and stuff kids do. When we got to the Gap, I was really bored and was starting to get cranky, but my mom said if I was good, I would get to go to Build-A-Bear and to a three-year-old, that place was like heaven. I decided to sit at the front of the store and pretend to be a mannequin. My mom was cool with it since she wasn't that far away and people walking by smiled and waved at me. That is until I saw Creepy Guy. The way this certain mall was set up, there were benches in front of certain stores near small carts that sold random things in trash bins. Well, this bench faced directly at the gap and usually other moms would sit there with strollers and try to calm down their screaming kids. My mom told me that later since I couldn't remember anything other than the rest. But this guy, he just sat on the end of the bench and stared directly at me and was looking me over. This dude was the most disgusting man I have ever seen in my life. Long, greasy, unkempt hair, black hair, dark green torn and stained shirt, ripped and dirty jeans, long greasy beard. This dude was gross. But me, being the friendly three-year-old I was, waved and smiled at him. He smiled the most creepy smile, and I could remember how yellow his teeth were as he waved at me. At this point, I didn't feel scared or threatened, I just thought that a nice man smiled at me. I then climbed out from the mannequin display area and was about to go to my mom when I heard him behind me. Hey sweetie, what's your name? I quickly turned around and saw this dude now kneeling at my height, smiling at me. Um, I'm Madeline is along the lines of what I probably said. Nice to meet you. I'm Tony. 
How old are you? He said to me, not seeing what was wrong with this, I told him my age. Wow, three. That's really cool. Say, do you like candy? Now I'm older, I really facepalm at knowing that this dude was using the whole candy shtick and that I was actually falling for it. Yeah, I like chocolate and gummy bears and lollipops. Again, I don't remember word for word what I said, but it was along those lines. Oh, really? Me too. Say, the candy store has a ton of gummy bears. Why don't you come with me and pick out all the candy you want? It was then that he stood and held his hand out for me. An innocent little me gladly took his hand and began to jump around excitedly. But as my hand was in his, my heart sank and my excitement immediately died. This dude began to drag me out by my hand until I hear the best thing I could hear in that moment. Hey, get away from my kid! My mom screamed. At this point, I think literally everyone's head turned toward my mom. I have never seen my mom so angry in my life, but at that moment, she went into full mama bear mode. My mom told me that the man looked down at me, looked back at my mom before letting go of my hand and running as fast as he could out of the store. My mom literally ran to me and pulled me into the tightest hug a very pregnant woman can do, and by then, security had come and started searching the whole mall. But by then, he was long gone. To give a little background information, I was 13 when this happened, around 5'1 and 95 pounds, and the usual European looking girl. Blue eyes, light skin, light hair, so not very intimidating at all. My friend who was with me is this heavily set ethnic looking friend. He was 15 at the time. My friend and I had just finished shopping for Halloween costumes and we were sitting outside this mall at around 6pm-ish. So it was still light out but kind of hard for me to make out details of objects. We were sitting on the trolley rail within 5 meters from the kiss and ride his father was going to pick us up from. We were chatting and basically just messing around with Snapchat filters and sending videos of ourselves to friends. This area in Australia is very known in my state for bogans and druggies. I see this man walking from person to person looking very homeless. I have some pity for him and I nudge my friend, let's call him Henry, directing his attention towards the homeless man. He goes rigid and keeps his eyes trained on the guy at all time, obviously a bit intimidated. Of course he comes up to us and I give him a long look over. He's this 5'8 man, dark skin, sores and scabs all along his face. His clothing is all ratty and caked in dirt. He reeks like death and obvious drugs. His eyes are very bloodshot and I'm thinking he's either on drugs or alcohol or maybe both as he's got an empty vodka bottle with a disgusting smelling liquid similar to the leftovers from homemade drugs. Got any change? He asked me. His eyes obviously drawn to my body and I feel disgusted, as I have a very childish body and I don't look very old, with this forty-something man staring at me like a piece of meat. I'm too scared to even answer so I simply shake my head. He sneers at me and looks at my friend, asking the same question. Henry, being the idiot he is, opens his wallet to check, flashing his bright yellow $50 note and the druggie notices it and reaches out. Henry, realizing what he's done and quickly closes his wallet, says, No, sorry mate, I don't have any. He glares at me, I don't even know why, I wasn't the one with fifty bloody bucks, and bares his disgusting teeth, all blackish yellow and his breath reeks of vodka and something similar to rotting meat. He then steps forward, so we're almost chest to chest and he looks down at me. Henry is too shocked to do anything and I can't step backwards as my back is pressed against the trolley return bar. My adrenaline kicks in and I assume an offense position. This obviously raised and I glare back at him attempting to intimidate him. This didn't work. He eventually steps backwards and walks off, not before calling us a couple of names. Henry of course does the stupidest thing he can do then and calls out, Oi, I said I was sorry bro. This causes the guy to turn around and stalk over to us. He gets right and close, making sure we can't move away without bumping into him. He gets right up in Henry's face and says, What do you gotta say, you bloody wog? Henry, as I said, belongs to ethnic culture. He's something like Greek, Italian, and Irish. So the word wog makes him angry very much so. 
It gets obviously ticked off and stands up and gets right into this guy, his shoulder pressed into his chest. Henry is a good 6'1 to 6'2 so he easily towered over this guy, basically breathing into his face. The druggie backs off and runs towards the bus station across the road, asking the people under the shelter for their money. I completely lose it at this point, shaking and talking incoherently whilst Henry calls his dad and tells him to hurry up because Cat, me, is in trouble. His dad arrives shortly and yells at us to get in the car and didn't take care that some guy had just scared the life out of us. He promptly drives me home, yelling at Henry the whole time. He pulls into my street and I get out and sprint home, now scared of just even being outside. I run inside and my dad sees that I'm obviously shaken up, calls the police and tries to get the appearance of the drogo out of me whilst I'm having a mini panic attack. The police are very helpful and send a car to the mall to check for the guy, coming up with nothing. The people who we sent were absolutely lovely and kept monitoring that place for a good month or two. I'd like to say it ends here, but sadly, it does not. That same year, I got a job at a small store in that very same mall. I hadn't seen this druggie for a good few months and the police never came up with anything, so they completely forgot about it. At my work, we get pretty festive during Christmas with Santa hats and reindeer antlers, so we obviously did the same during Easter. I had myself a cute little pair of ears and a cotton tail to go with it. On the registers, we joked around a lot and were always having conversations with our frequent customers. I was in a very good mood as I had such a lovely conversation with a lady and we were all laughing at her jokes. I called for the next customer to come over to me and I start scanning a few items before I hear this guy start talking to me. Cute ears. A girl like you shouldn't be dressing so adorably with such horrible boys working with you. The boys I worked with are absolutely lovely and they have never made a comment about my bunny getup. I look up and freeze. The same druggy guy from before is there. I try to keep my cool. I start silently crying and continue serving him before he makes a disgusting comment about me having to dress up sometime for him in his home. I knew what he was getting at and I was horrified that he'd say that to an underage girl. The boy on the register next to me hears and stalks over to my register standing directly beside me just staring the guy down. This guy looks obviously ticked off and says, Oi mate, I'm just talking to this lovely girl. He reads my name tag and says, Cat and I are having such a nice conversation, aren't we? I choke out a yes in reply and my friend sees I'm visibly scared. He basically moves me out of the way and finishes the transaction for me before telling my duty manager to make sure that that guy can't come back in. I've worked at that store since and I've only ever seen the guy once more. The same boy pushed me into the small room that the money machines were in and told me to stay put until that guy left the store. The managers were pretty ticked off that I wasn't working for a good 15 minutes, but the boy informed them of what had happened with me and that freaking creep. Seven years ago I was pregnant with my daughter. My niece, 15 at the time, would come with me to the local mall so I could walk around in aimless circles trying to induce labor. It was a rare mild break in the weather so we sat outside for a bit, enjoying the brief warmth before yet another snowstorm would pummel us. While sitting there, a guy walked over to us. He seemed a bit sketchy, probably a bit older than my 24 years. Hey there. He smiled, showing yellow dirty teeth. I forced a polite smile, not really wanting to talk. He focused his attention on my niece. I'm Justin. Who are you? Reluctantly, she answered. I'm Ashlyn. Cool, cool. I'm 19. How old are you? Ash glanced over at me. I was trying not to pull a face. 19, my big pregnant butt. Um, I'm 15, she answered. This went on for a while. Just short, polite answers. Finally, he started to get a bit weird, turning his attention to me. I took care to make sure my wedding ring was highly visible, and he didn't take the hint. I finally tried to politely excuse us. Instead of leaving us alone, he proceeded to follow us inside. To try to get him to go away, I feigned baby on the bladder and pulled my niece into the bathroom with me. What is up with this guy? Ash hissed. Thanks for having to pee. I didn't have to, he just gave me the creeps. Especially the whole you're a beautiful pregnant woman, I would be thrilled if you were mine. 
I cringed. Let's hang out in here for a while before we go back out. Hopefully he'll be gone. We waited about ten minutes before venturing back out. Looking around, I was relieved that he was nowhere in sight. We conferred real fast and decided that we would go on the walk as planned, just a few circuits. We were closing in on the bookstore with its tall floor-to-ceiling glass front. That's when I caught him following us. He was being sure to stay just far enough behind that we wouldn't realize he was there, but I caught his reflection. I nudged Ash and pointed towards the bookstore, hoping she could see the same reflection I did. Come on, let's go ahead and take a look. I know you hate books, but I want to see if they have anything new. We ducked in. Thankful for being short, it allowed us to disappear behind low shelves. Again, we waited it out, and we didn't see him around before continuing our trek. But yet again, I caught a glimpse of him not far behind us. Oh my god, I groaned under my breath. He's still there, I whispered to Ash. This time she grabbed my arm and dragged me into Victoria's Secret. Oh yes, perfect store for a woman who was nine months pregnant. This time, we decided to head back for the doors and get out of there. Neither of us was comfortable with this creep behind us. Before taking the exit, we looked around carefully making sure he was actually gone. We didn't see him. We hurried to my car, and thank goodness for reserved pregnancy parking. The next night, I turned on the news. It was the usual politics. Then the local news. A man had been arrested for a brutal beating of a local pregnant woman. He was caught in the act. The mugshot flashed up, and my jaw dropped. It was the creep from the mall. He had attacked the woman the day before. The same day we had been to the mall, he attacked her in the parking lot. I live in a fairly small city, but we have a pretty impressive mall called Destiny USA. It's huge, like seven stories in some parts. It's the sixth largest mall in the US or something like that. You're probably wondering why I'm rambling on about this, but it plays a part in the story. Like normal teenagers, me and my best friend at the time were there quite often. One Saturday, my dad dropped us off at around 3.30 and we began walking around. About two hours after we got there, these two guys make really loud and unnecessary gross comments to each other about us as we walked by. They made sure we heard, too, and were staring us down. We were only 14 at the time, and we've gotten catcalled quite a few times despite our age. Disgusting, I know so we didn't really think anything of it at first. Not even two minutes later, I looked back for whatever reason and realized the two guys from before are walking behind us. I'm a little uneasy from this, but not too worried. But I tell my friends anyways, and we decide to keep going and take unexpected turns into stores to make sure that they weren't following us. We went into various stores on that floor, and when we came out, they were always lingering nearby a bench, but not actually sitting down and they always began walking again as soon as we exited the store. At this point, we were panicking as neither of us were large or intimidating girls. I was only 5'2", and she stood at a mere 4'9", and neither of us weighed any more than 105 pounds. We speed walked to the nearest elevator, trying not to let them know that we caught on to them following us. We pushed a random button and ended up getting off on the floor underneath the one we were previously on. We walked around for a while until we saw the same guys coming from the opposite direction towards us. My friend alerts me about it, and we go back the way we came from and took the escalator up to another floor, then run over to a section of the mall that was recently built. After we're a good distance into the new section of the mall, we start peeking over the railing onto the floor below us. It doesn't take long for these two idiots to show up there, frantically looking around to try to figure out where we were. As I mentioned before, our mall is huge. It's super unlikely to see the same person twice, let alone multiple times in a matter of 15 minutes. I start planning in my head what we were going to do, but I soon realize that since they were directly underneath us, even if we decided to take off, there's a balcony sort of thing on all of the floors that allows you to look both down the floors below you and above you onto higher floors, which means they could see us pretty much anywhere we decided to go. We try sneaking into a nearby store and out of view of these two creeps, all the while praying that they don't look up to the floor above them. And just then we heard a loud, There they are! Come on, let's go! We look back and one of the guys is pointing at us, and they're both looking at us with this angry expression. 
They start booking it to one of the escalators that leads to the floor we are currently on. Me and my friend are in full panic mode by now. She's hyperventilating and I feel like I'm going to throw up, so we start hauling it, trying to get away from them. We continue running, starting to slow down from exhaustion, but now the two dudes are off of the escalator and are almost directly adjacent from us. My friend tells me to text my dad to tell him that we were ready to leave and to get to his car from the parking lot and bring it up front to the entrance to pick us up. Luckily, my dad usually drops us off, then does shopping of his own while we're walking around, therefore if anything happens he isn't far away and we can meet up with him easily. So we're tearing around this huge building, scared out of our minds trying to text my dad while these two intimidating dudes are running after us, gaining speed and getting closer by the minute. Luckily when we get to the entrance of the mall we see my dad and the two guys that followed us reluctantly backed off. I'm very thankful for my dad since the security guards at that mall were basically useless and no bystanders asked us what we were running or hiding from. It may not seem too scary but it was terrifying given we were only 14. I know I've heard a much more interesting story about a survivor of Ted Bundy, but I still find the story interesting. It puts into perspective how many people out there may have had close calls with serial killers. My dad can be pretty paranoid, but he's still a reasonable man, and come to think of it, this story may be the cause of that paranoia. This story takes place back in the good old days, specifically between 1978 and 1991. My dad was at that Grand Avenue Mall. He always lived in some sort of Milwaukee suburb, less than 30 minutes away from the actual city. So he's walking around the mall, doing whatever, when he notices this man following him. He brushes it off for a bit, thinking he was one of those undercover security guys. A few minutes later, after he left the store, this guy is still trailing him. To test whether this guy was really following him, he made a few pointless detours, ones that the man following him would only be mimicking if he was indeed following him. Needless to say, the man was still walking comfortably behind him. From that point, my dad knew something was wrong and made his way to the nearest mall security guard. When he turned around, the guy was hightailing it out of there. About a year later, my dad was watching the news, only to recognize the mugshot of his stalker, if you will, which identified the man as the one and only Jeffrey Dahmer. I love shopping. It's easily my favorite thing to do, especially when seasons change and all the new clothes appear, hanging neatly on gleaming silver racks. Last weekend I decided to pay my favorite mall a visit. I was looking for a nice pair of spring flats to wear with my jean overalls. I got the flats and a little something extra I definitely did not pay for. Really it was my own fault. I got so wrapped up in finding the perfect shoe that I tripped over his foot nearly sending a carefully placed display of sunglasses to the floor along with my own clumsy self. I apologized instantly, embarrassed and flustered, but he didn't seem upset. He actually looked quite amused. I assumed it was because my face took on a becoming shade of hot red, but maybe it was my panic at the thought that I might have hurt his ankle and all the commotion. Now I kind of wish I had. After getting up and trying fruitlessly to regain my dignity... I took a good look at the man I accidentally assaulted. He looked at least 30, tall, dark-haired, lanky, and a bit hunched over. I guess he must have worked at a desk all day. The features that really caught my attention though were his teeth, pearly white and straight, like in a toothpaste commercial. He must have noticed me looking because after that he smiled too much. I excused myself and backed away from him apologizing one last time for not paying much attention of my surroundings and then left the store. There were plenty more shoe stores in the mall I could shop in, if only to get the sour taste of that humiliating encounter out of my mouth. I ended up going to three more stores before finding the right shoes. As I was standing at the till, ready to purchase the newest addition to my footwear collection, the woman working the register smiled adoringly at me, and then at something behind me. I turned my head and saw the man with the teeth staring unblinkingly at me, a wide bright white grin plastered on his face. I flinched and asked the woman how long he'd been standing there. She said she'd seen him watching me since I entered the store and assumed he was just my beau waiting for me. 
I wondered if he'd followed me to the other stores as well, but I hadn't been paying attention. I bought the shoes and slowly made my way out of the store, feeling him watching me through the glass. As soon as I stepped out of the shop, he started towards me. I quickly weaved through a group of people and hurried towards the doors I came through, praying he wouldn't catch me before I made it to my car. Groping through my purse to find my keys, I cursed myself for not having them on hand just as I pushed through the doors and was momentarily blinded by the sun. Conveniently, I managed to squeeze my tiny car into a parking space right close to the doors, and I practically jumped for joy when my hand finally closed around the sharp metal of my key. I saw the flash of the mall door open just as I unlocked the door and squished myself into my seat. The man stalled as he walked into the sunlight, probably also stunned by the brightness of the day. He squinted and smiled when he saw me pull out of the parking lot. I would have to drive by him to get out. I sped up and triple-checked that my doors were locked before preparing to pass this terrifying stranger. As my car came out about an arm's length away, the man smiled his deranged smile, stuck one of his hands into his mouth, and pulled out a set of dentures. He then shrieked and threw them at my car. I haven't returned to that mall since, and I don't plan to. My senior year of high school and all throughout my winter and summer breaks from college, I worked at a kiosk in my hometown's mall that was associated with a local tattoo shop. We sold body jewelry and lighters and random crap like that. I really liked the job. I felt cool because people thought I was cool for working there and because my job was to convince them to buy way overpriced body jewelry, which I happened to be good at. On this particular day, I was home for summer break after my freshman year of college and working at the kiosk one afternoon. My brother was graduating from middle school that day and I was waiting for my shift to end and for my parents to come pick me up to go to the ceremony. During the summer, usually only one person worked a shift unless it was a Friday or Saturday night since most people were at the beach or doing outdoor activities. As my shift was ending, it suddenly became very busy and I was scrambling to help all the various customers. An older guy came up to the stand and asked for a business card. I handed him one and didn't pay him much attention. After all, he was walking away. I had already given him what he wanted and he kept his head down so I went back to helping the other customers. A few minutes later the phone rang to my store and I answered it. Hello, this is Tanya, thank you for calling the tattoo shop, how can I help you? The voice on the other line told me that he was the man who had just stopped and asked for a business card. I immediately thought that that was weird. Why didn't he just ask me whatever it was while he was there? But his next sentence cleared it up pretty quickly for me. I was wondering if you'd like to go out with me sometime. I said thank you and that I was flattered, but I would have to decline and ended the conversation. I left to go to meet my parents and didn't think of it again. A few days later, I was working alone again when the phone rang and I answered as always. Hello, this is Tanya. Thank you for calling the tattoo shop. How can I help you? It was the same man from the other day, asking me out yet again. I told him that it was very nice of him to ask me, but I wasn't interested. Well, then I'll be waiting for you when you get out of work so I can do what I want with you, you wench. I didn't even know what to do. I hung up the phone and did my best to not start sobbing, as I was again working alone. Fortunately, because of the nature of my job, lots of really sweet but very scary looking mall rats hung out around my store and my very tall, very dreadlocked, very facially pierced friend stood at my work with me all day while I called the police and my boss. I filed a million reports, but there was really nothing anyone could do if I didn't see him actually do anything. Unfortunately, his face was hazy to me because he had approached me with his head down, and during a time while I was attending to other customers, and I constantly wondered if he was actually in the mall, staring at me, or even talking to me, and I wouldn't even know it. This guy continued to call and harass all of the female employees that worked at my store for almost a year with threats. Everyone was escorted to the car at the end of the night by mall security, and this continued for long after I went back to school. By the end of the summer, I had regressed to wearing only baggy clothes and sweats with very little makeup because I didn't want to attract any extra attention to myself. Even though this happened close to 10 years ago, I still don't feel comfortable wearing tight or revealing clothes. (music) 
One day, I was walking around at the mall with my mother, my younger brother, and my little sister. I was 18 years old, and my brother was 17. Now, a little background, my brother was not a tiny teen. He was 6'3 at 17 years old already. My mother as well is 6 foot. We were walking around in the mall when, off in the distance, we heard a shout. My mom looked up and saw this huge man about 6'1 and probably 300 pounds walking at an aggressively fast pace. He looked really angry and was closing in on my mom for some reason. When he was about 10 feet away, my brother noticed he was going to stop and looked like he was about to attack my mother. My brother then stepped in front of her, in between her and the man. The man walked right up to my brother, pushed him hard with his entire body, trying to get around him to get to my mother. At this point, the man and my brother were screaming at each other, the man telling my brother to move, and my brother telling this man to screw off. They had just started throwing punches when another man, who had a very small build, probably about 5'10 and around 50-60 to 60 years old, jumped on this man's back and started to drag the man off of my brother and away from my family. This is when mall security decided to come around and drag the man away. The cops showed up, took statements from all of us, including the older gentleman. The cops and mall security told us that the man had attacked a number of other women in the mall, for reasons unbeknownst to them. The older gentleman who jumped onto the man told us that he saw what the man was doing to my brother and that he was attempting to attack my mom and decided to help us out. He was very kind. It was such a scary event and to this day, we aren't sure what happened to that man in the mall. So this happened about five years ago while I was nine months pregnant. I was Christmas shopping at the mall with my then seven and fifteen year old daughters one Saturday night in a very safe city with a very low crime rate. There was an Applebee's connected to the mall and we ended our shopping pretty late and the mall stores were starting to close. So I took my kids to the connected Applebee's for a late dinner. We finished up eating at around 10pm and left out of the Applebee's entrance into the practically deserted mall parking lot with shopping bags in tow. As we got to the car I was in the middle of maneuvering the shopping bags on my arms to find my keys when a 50-ish year old crusty looking guy starts walking up from somewhere in the parking lot with shaggy gray white hair and a faded flannel shirt and old jeans. I noticed him briskly approaching when he was about 40 feet away and he said, This is a stick up. Give me all your money. My blood ran cold and I stared at him owlishly and shakingly said, What? He then said he was just kidding and came up and stood right next to my daughters who were standing on the other side of the car waiting for me to unlock the car to let them in. He then starts making small talk with me and my girls. He's asking things like if they were being good girls for Santa, how old they were, and if we got all of our Christmas shopping done, what kind of things did we get, etc. He didn't seem drunk, high, slow, or mentally challenged at all. He was very coherent and seemed sound of mind. Mind you, I was a heavily pregnant woman, alone with my two daughters in a mostly deserted parking lot at 10 o'clock at night, who was being approached by a stranger who came and stood right next to my kids on the other side of the car, just shooting the breeze, talking to me and my kids with his hands in his pockets and occasionally looking over his shoulder. I didn't want to aggravate him, so I was politely conversing with him and trying to look calm and nonchalant while trying to disguise my frantic hands digging inside my giant purse for my car keys. This exchange went on for a couple of minutes while he periodically kept looking over his shoulder. I was silently panicking and trying to politely keep the situation from escalating by calmly and nonchalantly talking to him while also trying in vain to find my car keys to get us out of there. They were in there hiding good. I felt that at any moment he was going to pull a knife or gun or rob me my kids were right next to him, away from the mother on the other side of the car, and I couldn't find my car keys to get my kids into the safety of the car. He kept trying to engage them in conversation, and I could see that my oldest daughter was a little weirded out, and she kept glancing at me to gauge my assessment or reaction to the situation. Kids often tend not to recognize potential danger when they are with their parents, since they see us as their protectors. And being that he was only talking and acting friendly, 
and I was doing my best to stay calm. They were oblivious to the alarming situation we were all in. And being nine months pregnant and that I was no match for this full-grown man, especially if he was hiding a weapon on him. While still desperately digging for my keys, I tried politely to give him hints that the conversation was over by saying things like, It was nice chatting with you, but I gotta get these kids to bed, and it was nice meeting you, and telling my girls to say that it was nice meeting him too. My polite attempts to get this guy to leave wasn't working because he kept sidestepping my attempts and asking them what their favorite school subjects are and how nice young ladies they were, etc., while I was struggling with the shopping bags and digging in my giant cluttered purse once again for my car keys. My outgoing seven-year-old was completely oblivious to how not okay this situation was because he was being friendly and because of the whole I'm with mommy so I'm safe child mentality. So she started to talk about what she picked out for daddy for Christmas and started enthusiastically talking about kid stuff and asking if he knew what Minecraft was, etc. And keeping this creep from leaving us alone by keeping him engaged in conversation. They didn't realize that I was becoming desperate to get them out of there. Then I suddenly felt this sinking feeling of dread when I realized that I may have lost my keys in the mall. And they were stuck outside with this strange man who kept looking over his shoulders and was showing no signs of walking away. And I was thinking that he was waiting for the perfect moment to pounce. All he had to do was grab one of my girls and threaten their life and knowing it would make me do whatever he wanted as long as he wouldn't hurt them. I started to feel my adrenaline start to spike and my heart and stomach started doing flip-flops and I felt like at any moment something was going to go down as the gravity of realizing that there was no other people or witnesses around and that we were totally alone with him and in that moment the odds were stacked against us and that he has his chance. Then he all of a sudden was like, Okay, it was nice talking to you, see you later, and walked off in the same direction as to which he came. It wasn't until then I found my car keys and unlocked the car and told my kids to get in fast and I got in too and locked the doors and started the car and drove out of there like a madwoman. My 15 year old lightheartedly and jokingly said, Okay, that was weird, and laughed. I was overwhelmed with relief and then I was confused over what just happened. I thought to myself, why would a guy of seemingly sound mind think it's totally acceptable to go out of his way just to approach a woman and her kids in a deserted mall parking lot late at night just to chit chat? But being that nothing bad happened, I brushed it off and joked about it too. When we got home, my husband greeted us and asked us how shopping went. And I said it went well and my 15 year old told him what happened in the parking lot and how weird it was and was kind of joking about it. I started joking too saying how I was mentally having a panic attack while trying to look calm and I started making fun of myself by telling my husband how I was attempting to inconspicuously rummage through my purse to find my car keys. My husband went completely white and I acknowledged his horrified look of alarm and I assured him that albeit creepy the guy was just talking and eventually left on his own. Now, my father-in-law is a retired sheriff deputy and my husband went through police academy training after graduating high school. He decided to go into business school instead of becoming a cop. And being that the knowledge he gained from that, plus growing up with a cop for a dad, I found out why my husband looked absolutely horrified when I told him the details. What my husband told me completely rattled me to the bone. My husband told me that he was 100% sure that the reason why the guy was hanging around us and chit-chatting was because he was waiting for me to unlock my car. And the reason why he was standing next to our kids was because once I unlocked the car and the kids started to get inside, he was most likely going to force himself into the car with the kids and hold a knife or gun to them to gain leverage on me to force me to cooperate knowing that I wouldn't abandon my kids which would force me to get into the car with them and do whatever he wanted me to do, which most likely would be to drive to a remote location to do God knows what. And being that he wasn't wearing a mask, suggests that his intentions were to also leave no witnesses to identify him. I then remembered that he was positioned by the back seat passenger door where my seven-year-old was standing by waiting to get in. My husband told me that 
the most likely reason why the guy ended up leaving was because it took so long for me to find my keys, and the longer it took, the more anxious and spooked it made him. And that whole time, I was desperate to find my car keys, which through some sort of divine intervention, stayed hidden in my purse, thus saving us from potentially being abducted. Before I write this out, I want everyone to know that it made zero sense to me at the time, and it's still a difficult story to tell because of that. When I was around 9 or 10, my parents and I went to a mall one weekend in Jacksonville, Florida like we did all the time. We were walking back to our car and a woman walking with a limp approached us. Let it be known that my dad walks with a pretty clear limp. She asked if we can give her a ride to the Home Depot across the street because her car is over there and it's out of gas or something. She explains herself one or two more times and changes the destination, also to Lowe's then back to Home Depot. Only one of those places is actually across the street, which I think was more like six lanes of traffic with no ability to cross, so it isn't so crazy. My parents are kind, somewhat gullible people, so they said sure because it was the right Christian thing to do in their own words. I'm sketched out by her immediately just because it seemed really weird. She just keeps talking and trying to give us different explanations for why she needs a ride. We get to the car and I accidentally dump all of my stuff out of my back seat onto the ground to stall time just because I'm really creeped out. I take my sweet time doing this. My dad starts the car and we're about to drive when a cop approaches the car and tells us we shouldn't give this woman a ride as she is a former and wanted criminal. And this is the part that doesn't make sense, maybe I misheard something, but I remember him stopping us and being adamant not to give her a ride as it was a terrible idea. She got out of the car and walked away normally with no limp. I'm guessing she was a grifter, homeless person, just petty former current criminal who did stuff like this all the time. It just bothers me knowing that she could have mugged my parents or hurt me or them. I'm just happy that cop was there to give us that warning. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.